Hello, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Audio Podcast Show. With your host, Kenneth Bacor. And today's special guest, Anise Sharifi. This is episode one, recorded on July 12, 2018. Yeah, well, welcome to this uh, first inaugural edition of the EV Revolution audio podcast show. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, this is something that uh, I've kind of had in the works for quite some time. Um, wanted to provide an audio show to kind of fill in some of the gaps between the, the videos that uh, you've seen Trevor and I do and then that we do as well. Uh, from an update, you know, when we do stuff on cars or I'll do some Nissan stuff or whatever. So I thought we'd try to do something fun. And I've got the lovely and talented Anise here. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. <laughs> Thanks for coming into the uh, EV Revolution studios in, in the secret location in Ontario here. Uh, but I'm sure people can find out where that is. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure and it's an honor to have you on, on the very first audio show. And, and um, you know, I thank you for taking the time out of your extremely busy schedule no to come problem. and help me. And I think this is going to be fun. Uh, what I wanted to do, folks, is just do some audio stuff from time to time. Keep it a little bit different than the video shows that you see on YouTube. Uh, talk about some other topics, uh, bring in some different guest speakers to talk about uh, maybe their expertise surrounding the EV marketplace and so forth. So that's what we decided to do. And here's our first one. And we we kind of have an agenda. Most of these shows might be kind of loose and fun. Uh, and we'll just, you know, we put a, an agenda together, what, like three minutes ago? Something like that? <laughs> Ooh, beautiful. So we're winging it. And, okay. you know, we forgot to even silence some of our devices. Oh, Bad go. me. You know, what can you do? But, you know, I'm going I'm to try to, let's do this in one take kind of thing. Let's so do let's it. just, let's go through. So what we wanted to talk about today, and, and I'm, again, I'm very excited that you've joined us and you say is, you know, to get your perspective from a woman's point of view, um, and we talked to a lot of people, obviously, the car industry itself is still very male dominated. Even I would say the EV industry is still very male dominated. You go to club meetings, you go to events, and there's still a majority of guys that are out there. And that's, you know, it's slowly changing. But we are seeing more and more women, of course, get into cars and, and looking at EVs and that whole uh, EV infrastructure. So what I wanted to start the show off with is, is kind of get some of your background, some of your experiences and your thoughts on, on this whole magical thing we call electric cars and electric vehicles so um i understand in, in talking maybe tell the folks a little mm -hmm. bit about you mentioned to me before that you're a car person so what does that mean okay so yeah i grew up with um a lot of cars in our house i guess like my dad and my dad and, and my brother were um car enthusiasts for sure mm -hmm. so i grew up hearing them talking about cars and engines and models and this and that and so i was i was around that from a young age mm -hmm. and so when i grew up i i did want to be part of their conversations as well so i did have to like learn things and kind of you know just pick things up yep. as i went along yep. uh, because i wanted to be like part of like their cool group yep. <laughs> with like my dad and my yeah. brother. So yeah, I learned things along the way. And then, you know, for a while it wasn't a big deal. But then of course, like later on in my relationships as well, whether it was ex-boyfriends and things like that, the cars was always a big deal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, they always had like fancy cars. And so I was always around that. And that car, that culture is a little appealing to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you get into like any mechanical with, you know, with your family working on cars, like, you know, getting wrenches out and changing oil or spark plugs or any of that okay, stuff? Okay, so I haven't got that dirty. Oh, well, that's okay. But you've, <laughs> but you've watched yes, it, right? I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the culture it, itself in general was very interesting to me, how enthusiastic yeah. people get with it and how engaged and the passion mm -hmm. and the conversations and the get togethers. And that was always really exciting right. to me. Right. So along the years, yeah, I've been more involved in it, but also like in my career, it took a big, it took a big part. So mm -hmm. I do work in the, in the, in the auto industry, That's I just right. happen to work with dealers, yeah. ironically, to, you know, help them market and uh, promote their brands and things like that. So I have been around cars yeah. for, for a long time awesome. in all different aspects. That's awesome. That's yeah. great. And uh, so because of that fact, and obviously predominantly the cars you've been around have been internal combustion type cars for Correct. many, many years. 
Um, you know, we stumbled, our paths crossed probably at a, at a, at a Tesla meetup, I think, or something like that, or way back when a year or so ago, and we're getting together, fantasizing about model threes and all this other stuff. Um, but how did that, how did you get your foot into the EV market? What was kind of your your thoughts on that? So it, like when I think back, how I really got into it was because of my current, my current job. Mm -hmm. So the company that I work with, um, the owner yep. uh, is John Dixon. Okay, and, <laughs> and, for, those, and for those who don't know, and, yes. we, and we've had John on the show before, sure. so he's the president of the so Southern Ontario Tesla Owners Club. Did I get that right? Ontario. Oh, Ontario in general. Right. All of right. Ontario. All of Ontario okay. Tesla, Tesla the, owners. He's the big kahuna for all of <laughs> yes. Ontario Tesla Owners Club. Great so guy. when I started with the company, he already had his Model S, I believe, at mm -hmm. the time, and... I mean, I knew about Tesla, like, just, like, on a really, like, basic yep. level. But then when I started working with the company, like, you know, just being around John, and he is so enthusiastic yes, about it. He's absolutely. very engaged. And yeah. so, you know, I would, I would, I would just... I hear he's hear got Tesla underwear, but... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm <keep> not going. Gonna... <laughs> sorry, John. I don't know. I don't Your know why you know out. this. <laughs> no, I, don't ask me. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. So I would be around this more, and I would yeah. hear about it here and there. Yeah. But then... Um, what happened was along the way, I started to, I don't really know how to explain this. Like mm -hmm. it was, I was learning things about the environment in general, yep. but really what changed it was, I think, um, at some point I was, I was learning more about my diet. I know this yep. sounds really odd. <laughs> no, in fact, I, I talked to somebody earlier this week that correlated electric yeah. vehicles and diet. A diet. So it was inter an interesting conversation. And this was a couple yeah. years ago mm -hmm. and I yeah. was learning about my diet and I was yeah. learning about just meat mm -hmm. and just how this infects the environment oh, yeah. and I was watching all yeah. these documentaries and I was reading a, a lot about it yeah. and Tesla kept coming up believe it or not and yeah. like our vehicles and you know it just there was a lot of talk about that mm -hmm. and so I was learning more about that and that led me to actually really consider um, an EV as my next vehicle excellent and so when the model 3 came up yeah. as a vehicle of you know to be produced for someone like mm -hmm. me really mm -hmm. it really yeah. is it, it's designed exactly for someone like me <laughs> I you're, think. you're absolutely correct yeah. so i was like you know why not yeah. so when they were op when they opened up for you know putting deposits down it was mm -hmm. like a no-brainer for me i was like what do i have to lose you mm -hmm. know i'm just mm -hmm. gonna put a deposit and see where it goes and mm -hmm. that was really two years ago yes and it's crazy how fast time flies it i does. can't believe that was two years ago yes. i put my deposit and then and, and then of course as time Time went by the more I learned about the company the more I learned about again like you know food industry and the mm -hmm. environment and mm -hmm. like this and that there was just so much that yeah. fell into place the more I was confident like I have made the right decision here and I yeah. definitely want to go ahead with this when it is going to be time to configure I am going to go ahead with it so I think those two years were actually mm -hmm. like really good for me to mm -hmm. like make sure that I had done the right decision I had made the right mm -hmm. decision and I want to go ahead with this very good observations. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, they look at Tesla, they they get involved in that whole industry that Tesla represents, and they really kind of recognize that there's a bigger picture than just yeah. you know, Tesla making cars out of this whole industry. You mentioned the health, there's the climate, yeah. the environment, there's all these other things that start to come into consideration that you don't really think about at first. Sure. Most people, you know, that I've talked to, Trevor, probably yourself, when you start talking electric cars, they think, well, you know, how much I'm going to save? Like, yeah. I'm going to save gas and how much maintenance, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on the show, but... Um, you know, that tends to be kind of a starter, but then when you start unpeeling the onion, right. you know, all these other things come uh, points of interest. Um, I should say also that the reason why a, a big factor had to do with the visuals as well. Mm -hmm. I did fall in love with the company and mm -hmm. what they were doing sure. in general, but also like physically, like I, I do love the vehicle, the way yes. it looks. The design and that, and that had yeah. a big, that yeah. had a big part of, of it. Like, you know, again, like being a bit of a car person, mm -hmm. like the car is very appealing. I find it very sexy mm -hmm. and that yeah. had a big part. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the current EVs are a bit more, I, I don't know. Yeah. Like this just had a bit yeah. more appeal to it. Yeah. And so. Some more functional. Sure. Design. Design. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. this not only was, um, you know, a, a big part of like, yes, the mm -hmm. environment and, and just having a bigger mission, but it was yeah. also so good looking. Yeah. And yeah, that, that definitely had a big part. <laughs> it certainly does. Yeah. And, you know, and, and it does for, for hundreds of thousands of people mm -hmm. that have put orders in. So, and that are looking to get 
dashboard to the car. So thanks for that experience. So it's interesting that, um, I, and obviously, I mean, you know, budgets are a lot of, a lot of right. concerns for people that, you know, instead of that an S or an X, looked yeah. at a three. So again, with that, and, and you know, we just, uh, we talked about our incentives earlier before we started taping here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's a big draw, of course, for a lot of people in Ontario and, and in the U.S. and other areas that offer incentives. So, you know, it helps to, to get into those vehicles. Yeah, I mean, very I'm I'm very lucky that I did have that incentive. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> when I did get so it. So now you've had your Model 3 for what, a couple of months? Because I was there when you picked it up. And yeah. Your I, mother's I... a dear, by the way. She's just a darling. I love her. <laughs> Tell her I say, hi, mom. Uh, hi, Anissa's uh, mom. How are you? You're a, you're a rock star. She was so she excited. Excited. She was so excited. That was, that and was can funny, I tell man. you that yeah. since then, yeah. since I picked up my car, yeah. she is like an enthusiast now. Is she? And she like talks about the EV nice. world and she's like, and she talks about it with like all her friends and she like promotes it. Like there's EVs everywhere. Isn't that funny? <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's kind of the spinoff as well about getting an EV. All of a sudden people take notice of it and, whoa, my son or daughter drives this. And totally. Look at, look at the benefits and they start preaching it and you don't have to say anything. I don't have to do anything. I she was it. just so blown away that yeah. day, the whole like delivery yeah. experience. Yeah. I think she was more involved yes. than like excited. And than that was, was her first time at Tesla. At a Tesla oh my God. Unit, right? Yeah. I remember. I yes. Like that to yeah. be in the store for that long. Yeah. She was so blown Other away. Maybe seeing it at the mall or yeah. something, right? Like walking through one of the stores. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, she's a darling. Yeah. So, but that's a be- another benefit. You're right. Mm-hmm. You know, when people see it, see, and they understand your lifestyle, yeah. how it fits into your lifestyle, then people can start relating. They go, right. okay, well, now I can see how an EV may fit my lifestyle because of some of the examples you're giving. So right. how's you, now, so a couple of months have gone by, you know, mm-hmm. you've had the EV smile, grin to grin, so you're, you're, you know, your jawline is sore now <laughs> because of it, but we all have it, right? Even right. me and my leaf, I'm just smiling every day. People think I'm like, you know, smoking something, but <laughs> I don't, honest. Uh, but come October 17th, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It'd be a whole new I get that home. all the time. Yeah, know, it's, it's, what are you on? It's all good. It's all good. We're on the, high on life. The, I'm e- high on life. the EV smile. That's it. Um, so a couple of months have gone by. How's your ownership experience so far in your Model Three? Yeah, I mean, I can't <laughs> say enough how yeah. much I am loving it. Good. Good. Um, just the whole experience in general, like not only, um, obviously like I love the car yep. and I know this is going to sound so cheesy. So just, 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 just hear me out though. You know, if Trevor and I have learned anything <laughs> just... about the comments that we get, people love cheesy stuff. Okay, so lay it just, on. I know man. this lay is on. so cheesy, yeah. but I'm going to say it anyway, yep. but believe it or not, the car <laughs> makes me want to be a better person. Okay. Yep. And I've mentioned this before, I, I think that. a little yep. bit, is that the car does come with a little bit of responsibility. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. I feel like I have to like step up to that. Yes. And I love that. Yeah. I love that so yeah. much because I really do feel like here is an opportunity to, I don't know, like just be different mm-hmm. and, you know, have a stand yeah. and, 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 and stand for something and I don't know, be proud. Yeah. And I am very proud uh, to drive this. And again, I no, know it I sounds it. cheesy. No, it doesn't. It's, I think, it's, it is cheesy. I think a but, lot of people that have EVs can relate no matter Tesla right, or not. Uh, they right. can relate to it. Yes. Yeah. This car does just make me want mm-hmm. to be. And, and I'm more conscious about other things. Mm-hmm. So because I'm driving this car now, I'm more conscious. And I think it's, and that does come a little bit from what other people are putting on yeah. to me as well. Like, yeah. oh, well, you drive an EV. So does that mean you do this? And does that mean you do that? And then, oh, yeah, some of that, I, you know, I, I feed into a little bit. Yeah. Yes, I'm more conscious about certain things that I do, that yeah. I'm eating, that I'm putting out, whatever. Yeah. It is a lifestyle. Absolutely is. That's a great point you make. I mean. People, we'll talk a little bit about this right. on another segment here, but, you know, you're more aware of things exactly. when it comes to health, environment, all these other things that are just, are beyond just right. the car itself. Yes. And, you know, that I'm not putting gas in the car, that I'm, you know, running on electrons and all exactly. this kind of stuff. So it's interesting. And and I remember watching a piece years ago, um, and it could have been part of the movie of, you know, whatever, when GM killed the electric car, the mm. first one about the EV1. And it's, it's interesting because you, you jog by memory. I'm, I'm pretty sure I heard some people say some very similar comments to what you just said about, you know, when they were driving that car and owning it, you know, the different perspective that it brought to them. Mm. And that that's something that, you know, it's not on a bumper sticker. It's not advertised mm. in a brochure anywhere, right? Um, and, and, you know, over my experience over in the UK last month for Fully Charged, meeting all these wonderful people that are passionate about mm-hmm. doing what they're doing nobody's doing this stuff for money you no. know, on YouTube and stuff. It's because they, they believe in what right. they're doing and they have that same type of characteristics where right. all of a sudden these, they're aware of these other things. 
Yes. So that's a great viewpoint, and, and it's something that you just can't sell to people. They have to experience it right. themselves, right? Exactly. Yeah. I can't Beautiful. really, you know, you can't really just put that on a yeah. tweet. Like, no. you just have yeah. to experience it. You can try. It. People think, this lady's crazy. <laughs> She's crazy. What's she up to there? <laughs> No, that's awesome. So you're fun and you're having a blast now. Yeah. I remember uh, or for, you were telling me that, so you live in a condominium. So right. it's not like, you know, myself, I have a home <laughs> charger so I can plug it in every night if right. I need to, whatever. So, you know, we are going to explore that on some of the future shows and stuff like that mm-hmm. about, about condo charging and what's involved there. But maybe you can explain to some of our listeners here, you know, uh, so you don't have any, you're not charging at mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. How are the hell are you getting, all, <laughs> getting around? Oh, how the heck, I should say, keep this, uh, you know. Uh, a kid right. friendly show here. So, yeah. can I tell you that yeah. um, if somebody had asked me now, yeah. like, "Hey, you're not you're not going to have a charger at your place. Yeah. Like, are you going to get an EV?" and I'd be like, yeah. "No, that's crazy." Yeah. <laughs> but I did it anyway. You did. I got the EV, and then I said, oh, "I'll figure it out later." <laughs> Amazing how that happens. Just, Let's live with the repercussions. I'll, I'll after figure the fact. it out later. Yeah. Don't be silly. So. Yeah, I don't have a charger in my building. Yeah. However, I am in the talks with my condo corporation. Okay, they good. are considering it. Yep. I don't know how that's going to go, really. Yeah, like, so right now, it's a, little, a lot of back and forth. Yeah. Um, I'm very lucky, again, that John is my boss, and I have, like, four chargers at work. Yeah, there's a couple of other Teslas uh, for yeah. the employees that work with you. So yes. So it's a nice environment, a very pro-EV environment over there. Very, yeah. very, mm-hmm. um, you know, yeah. helpful yeah. with that. Yeah. So, and he doesn't, like, charge me anything to park and, and like, Beautiful. you know, to, 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 yeah. to, to, to charge my car yeah. there. Yeah. Nice. So when I'm in the office, I charge, and then um, when I'm not, because, mm-hmm. again, and my my work does involve a lot of driving around. Right, we had talked right. about this. I remember a yeah. long time ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I am on the road a lot. Yeah. And so when I am on the road, mm-hmm. I do rely on the superchargers. Great. And your experience has been very positive. It's been there too. Yeah. very great. Excellent. I mean, Good I stuff. have. Yeah. I mean, it's been great. Yeah. <laughs> I and really that, can't say and anything bad. And with these temperatures and the heats that we're getting here in the Greater Toronto area, if I say GTA, people think I'm talking about Grand Theft Auto. And no. Like, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> That'd no, be it's, cool. It's Greater Toronto area. Wait, folks. hold on. Yeah. That'd be so cool to drive my Tesla in Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> I'm sure you can do that. There's. Got, I think it's already happening. Okay, my no. buddy James in the UK writes this code for these guys do so, uh, it put a does. tesla so, on there if there's not one james if you're listening put one in there i'm pretty sure there is she wants to steal yeah, one and just drive back awesome. out of it um but uh, are you seeing you know 400k plus range because you've got the long range version so yeah or absolutely uh, almost yeah because it's almost 500k yeah right? so, so i exactly so yeah. uh, again like i kind of follow that 80 yeah. percent or 90 yeah. percent i set my my yeah. battery to that when i'm yeah. in the office and then that gives me plenty oh yeah right. um but yes, so so if I if I know that I'm going to have a really busy day the next mm-hmm. day and I've got lots of driving around yep. to do and I'm driving from here to here and yep. it, maybe it is going to be a really hot day yep. and I have to have my AC on, I have to charge my yep. phone and whatever, yep. I am conscious of that, obviously. Yep. So I do like to make sure I have a full charge. So Excellent. if that yep. means that I have to go to the supercharger and yep. charge up before, like on a Sunday night yep. to make sure that my Monday drive is going to be, right. you know, fully, then if that gives right. me the peace of mind, no problem. I have yep. no problem doing that. Excellent. And you're fortunate yeah. that you're not... Not, you, you live not that far away from a supercharger. I live very close Perfect. to the supercharger. Excellent. Yeah. So that, that helps a lot. So yeah. obviously there's been some, you know, you didn't just jump into this without thinking. There was probably <laughs> no. some background thought there. A okay, I've yeah. got this, I've got this. I can kind of get a, get around with it if I factor the range. And, sure, yeah. And again, you looked at your lifestyle and that's, that's you know, one of the most important things we ask people mm-hmm. or when people come and ask us, should I get an EV? It says, well, it depends on your lifestyle. Exactly. If you need to haul around eight by four sheets of plywood and tools all day, <laughs> then a Model 3 is not going to do it for you or a Nissan Leaf or right. whatever. Get a pickup truck, that's what you need, sure. or a van or whatever the case is. Um, you know, so, you know, it's really fitting it in. And, you know, you you whether you consciously did it or not, mm-hmm. you you did look at your environment and see, hey, an EV can fit because I can get around through this. My, lifestyle. my lifestyle. So perfect. And I, and I have a lot of people actually ask me that. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, is it worth it? What do you yeah. think? What should I do? And I always say that. Uh-huh. Um, it has to fit your lifestyle. It does. And it's so quiet. My wife and daughter love they you know, they hate driving, but they love going on drives in, in the Leaf because yeah. it's a Zen type so of. Quiet. It's just so quiet. Yeah. In fact, a little side note: we have some relatives visiting from the UK uh, with, with an eight-month-old baby, uh, and the baby uh, has never fallen asleep in any. They they don't have a car; they rent it. They live in London, so they rent a car. The baby has never fallen asleep in, in a car before. 
um, I take them out the other night and within two minutes, the baby's out. <laughs> and I said, it's the whole Zen EV thing, man. Zen. So for, you know, parents out there, get an EV, your kids will be out Sleep. like a light. <laughs> No sugar needed or whatever. Keep the sugar away. Well, that's great. So, you know, it's great examples to understand your thought process and your experiences because mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot of listeners, either they can relate directly or they know people and these mm-hmm. are things that they can pass on about, you know, again, another important reason and knowledge to to look at um, when you're thinking about electric vehicles and how they fit. Yeah. And if I can just say, like, yeah. that is kind of one of the reasons why I have been a little bit more vocal um, mm-hmm. on social media since I have, a, um, like, picked up my car. Yep. Is I just, I, that's really the only reason. Like, I just want people to consider uh-huh. an EV if they are in the market for a new vehicle. Yep. It's a viable choice. Very much and so. if you are yeah. in the market for a new vehicle, Yes, consider an EV as an option. <laughs> and, it's just, and there's going to be more available. Yes. Like we talked about. We talked on the show. There's the, there's going to be more product every year, year by year. Mm-hmm. The hockey stick is happening, and uh, there's going to be more selection, better pricing, mm-hmm. even with or without incentives. It's still a good choice. Yeah. Whether Excellent. it's a Tesla or not, like I don't really care whether yeah. you pick up a Tesla or not. It's yeah. it's about like just considering an EV as an option. Exactly. Yeah. And we will at the end of the show give everybody your Twitter details so they can yeah. learn how to follow you and everything because <laughs> okay. it's going to be exciting. So thanks for sharing your experiences. And since we were talking about charging, um, I wanted to just uh, chat with you about an article that I read recently. And, and I know you have some input because you've been asked a lot of these questions as well, that there's some misunderstandings uh, about charging, you know, that people think about. Um, because obviously it, it isn't the gas station experience, right? Mm-hmm. And I think as a fast paced society, at least in the modern world, we're used to kind of just go, 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 right? I've got to get from A to B the fastest way possible, even if I don't necessarily need to get there that fast but we're just kind of programmed and stopping refueling for gas that five ten minute experience whatever it is um like i'm one i'm one that i I refuse to wait in line for gas fill-ups like i don't care how cheap it gets i don't wait in line i'll go get it when i need to in in the other cars now i don't have to worry about it but um so there's a misconception though that oh i gotta go get an ev so my charging time is going to be like all over the place and 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 Mm -hmm. people get impatience and and there's something called this impatience barrier that is a thought that people have uh, to um to dissuade them from looking at an ev as a viable option for their life that's one Mm -hmm. of the reasons and it really is a misconception and and it's interesting because this article that i'm referencing that was done in the uk um in early earlier part of july here Um, Just talks about some surveys and stuff they did, and I won't get into numbers, but the interesting takeaway from uh, from this uh, uh, article was that, you know, fast is not always the the way to longevity or positive health. You talked about health Mm -hmm. earlier. So like fast foods, we know, hey, once in a while it's okay, but, you know, you watch that that Big Mac thing Mm -hmm. movie a few years ago, I mean, didn't do the guy any good eating one of those every day. So, um, you know, any, so fast isn't necessarily good for you on all the cases. And when you think about filling up at a gas station, you're standing, you're standing in this area where you're inadvertently inhaling some particles or particulates mm-hmm. that are floating around the air, whether it be from cars running or cars are shut off or the gas pump fumes or whatever. So you're standing around that kind of pollution and it could, it, it may seem very minor, but factor in how many times you're mm-hmm. there in that environment over and over and over through your lifetime. Um, you know, certainly a cause for concern there. Um, and and um, it also talks about, you know, even if you go once a week and then, um, you know, what the effects could have on your health there. Now, one of the, the pluses about, e, about EV charging is, of course, they don't happen in five minutes. We're not there with ultra super fast, you know, mm-hmm. uh, charging yet. But um, a lot of the chargers that are out there are either in malls or they're in areas where you can do something. Some of them are near parks mm-hmm. or whatever. And the health benefit is, you know, this, this um, person that was doing the article says, you know, when they charge your car for 20 or 30 minutes, they, get, they go walk. Mm-hmm. The weather's permitting and it's decent. They go out for a walkabout. And imagine doing that all the time. Like we don't do that when we're refueling our cars, right? A, we don't, there's no time. And B, that's just not the way it is when you're gassing up your car. But here's an opportunity to actually experience some health. Mm-hmm. Have you done that? Either at a supercharger or whatever and decided to, hey, I've got 20 minutes, you know, let's go for a walk? Absolutely. So it is about um, 
time management a little bit, mm -hmm. but it has helped me prioritize certain things. And so if I know that I'm going to be charging my car like Sunday night, yep. um, I will actually like, yes, I'll plug it in. There are times where I'll plug it in and then I'll just go and run some errands at the mall because my supercharger is by the mall. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for sure. I'll do that. Um, but I actually like to like take certain things in the car with me mm -hmm. and I'll get some reading oh, yeah. done. True. I'll get some writing done. So it's not just body health, but mind health. Yeah. Kind of so stuff. it's, get, it's get a great time done. actually uh -huh. for me to, okay, I'm, I true. know I'm going to be there for 20, 40 yeah. minutes, let's just say. Yeah. And so I'm going to take some like work and get yeah. some work done. <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? Yeah, for sure. So if it is going to be during the day and I've got things to do, of course, I'll plug it in. It's happened It's happened a couple times where I'll go grab a coffee because there's always a Starbucks around and I'll go grab a coffee and get yep. some things done. Yep. But there's just, I think everybody has time for like 40 minutes, 30 minutes, well, an hour. Yeah, yeah, you have time. You don't You don't view it as a <laughs> as an obstacle, no, right? No. You, don't, you don't view it as, oh, crap, I have to sit here for 40 minutes. Not now. at all. Exactly. And I yeah. think that's what a lot of people miss from a, don't get it from a charging, uh, from charging that it's part of the experience. So, yeah. I mean, you know, I talk to a lot of people that do a lot of long distance driving in their EVs and, um, you know, stopping at some of these charging outlets, some of them are beautiful. They're really mm -hmm. nicely done up. There's things there, activities to do in different parts of Canada, US and so forth. Um, and, but that the stop is part of the whole trip. It's right. not just getting from here to the hotel in Florida as fast as we can but the stops that we do are part of the overall you know yeah. as you map them in experience so you're able to do things whether it's fun things or work related but, or, or just relaxing a little bit but that's just for me yeah. and i don't have a charger at my house right, i think right. most people mm -hmm. uh, maybe i shouldn't say most people i don't know really but i think people that do have evs would consider installing a charger in their home mm -hmm. like you do Absolutely, so yeah. it doesn't yeah. even matter how much time it's going to take because you're going to plug great. it in at night yeah. anyways and it yep. your your char your car is always going to be charged up in the yeah. morning that's a great that's a great point this article doesn't address that fact that really the it's a minority of right. people that yeah. actually need to go beyond home charging on a right. daily basis so the, the takeaway the people that don't have a home charger that rely on superchargers or external chargers out because they, they don't whether they're in a condo or whatever um, take away those folks that the vast majority of people have chargers at home mm -hmm. uh, because of uh, obviously the economic benefits of charging in off peak times. Most hydro companies, you know, meter their their uh, power at uh, for cheaper rates when uh, during off peak when the grid is uh, got tons of room. Uh, so they want you to charge overnight and you wake up like like you do with your iPhone or your, your Galaxy or whatever. It's fully charged fully in the morning charged. off you go or if you need to charge it. I mean, there are days where even though the leaf has a 270 kilometer range average right now, uh, there are, uh, there might go three or four days without charging it wow. because I don't need to, yeah. you know, I'm only doing 50, 60 K a day. Yeah. So I don't need necessarily need to plug it in every day right. yeah. and go up to hundred percent. But I do plan my days. Like you were saying, if, yeah. I, if I know I'm going to go, you know, to the other side of Toronto and back, and it's going to be a couple hundred K, then I'm going to put it to full and that sure. kind of stuff. So, but it's a good point. Again, the vast majority of charging is going to be done at home. So it's really when you're going beyond those ranges mm -hmm. within a day, within mm -hmm. that period that you're not going back home. So I think, you know, that's obviously a benefit to people that think, oh, I have to go find a charger all the time where, again, most of your charging is done at home. But if you do, you've got the benefits of being able to get stuff done while you're waiting for the charge, uh, going out for a walk. There's some health benefits from mm -hmm. a physicality perspective uh, or just chilling, reading a book, relaxing mm -hmm. or having a coffee or talking to people. Uh, I know a lot of the, the people that, that we talk to, you know, that go and charge, the people come up to them and they start talking. talking you know, and that and happens the next thing you know, too. geez, I'm done already. Yeah, right? yeah. So start chatting up with some people yeah and, and it could sometimes it's people that don't have an ev they walk by oh is that a model three or is that a leaf or whatever <laughs> yeah and really you're able to get around in that thing so and next thing you know your 30 minutes is gone yeah right so it's interesting so i just think that you know when you're talking to people about you know the misconceptions about charging bring up some of those points that you know the gas station is more negative than there is positive there i mean time Yes, you can't beat the time of a gas station fill up, but just think about the health benefits and it's something we never really consider, mm -hmm. but it, they're there whether we like to consider them or not. No matter how clean they say the gas is and whatever, there's still, there's still those hazards over time. And they mm -hmm. could be very minor, but it's something to consider. But it's certainly, um, you know, when you have an opportunity to, to, to charge your car and then get out and walk for 20 minutes whenever, the benefits of that alone mm -hmm. are, are huge over a lifespan or over a long period of time. Um, so it's interesting. So when you hear people about, um, you know, that impatience barrier, try to bring up some of those points, you know, mm. some of the things that you mentioned uh, when you do at a charging, when you're charging. And, 
and you know mo most of that will be able to um, to ease that those barriers for people when they when they hear these kind of things right and, and relate it to what you do so so it's interesting and and again most people as you said they don't charge they don't drive the full range every day so right so it's it's only a very much a minority right right yeah so there we go so hopefully that helps if you're running into people or if you've got some thoughts yes. about uh, how much of a barrier charging is if not really when you look at it from a different perspective I wanted to talk about maintenance. So I'm sure that one of the drivers for you getting a Model 3 and because you've been around cars before with mm. family and stuff, you know that the ICE internal combustion cars require some maintenance, right? There's fluids <laughs> to change and oh, yeah. all these spark plugs and timing belts and all this other stuff that, that come into play over the course of the car. Um, and it's just an interesting article that I read the other day that had this uh, diagram uh, that our viewers can't see, but you and I could see. And it just really just showed all these different icons about how much, uh, how, how many of the components in an ICE vehicle versus an EV need either replacing or maintenance during the car's lifespan. So there's a whole whole bunch of stuff on a gas car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've got stuff, I mentioned spark plugs. So yeah. And you've got your basic oil change, right? Mm -hmm. Every 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 kilometers or miles, whatever the case is, uh, you need to get this oil oil change and then of course your filter goes with that you've got an air filter you've got uh, tires you've got fuel filter um, brakes exhaust coolant radiator fan belts timing belts water pumps on and on and on now of course some of these are similar in an right. ev right an ev um they have brakes uh and you you do need to look after the brakes they have tires, tires otherwise yeah. they're not going very far right. if they're on bricks something's yep. going on right <laughs> <laughs> somebody's paid you a visit right <laughs> Um, and, and all that kind of stuff, you know, they don't have, and they have a filter per se. Usually most modern cars now have cabin air filters, right. which you do need to look after at some point. Uh, I know Tesla can take it one step forward with their bio weapon defense yeah. mode bubble thing uh, for the <laughs> zombie apocalypse, whenever that comes. <laughs> Or, or Trump does something. No, well, let's stay no. unpolitical ah. here. Let's not throw in any Trump stuff. We love you in the U.S. We really do. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff. And of course, when you when you think about a, a battery electric vehicle, mm -hmm. really you've got tires. So you do need to properly rotate it because you've got a lot more weight there, usually versus a, a similar type of ICE car. And uh, and because of the power, right? And and I'm sure once or twice you've put your foot down on the oh, accelerator yeah. <laughs> and experienced the instant torque effect, right? Uh, you know, doing enough of that can wear down tires, uh, yeah. the drive tires a little bit faster. Really? So, you know, that's, that's a rumor I heard anyway. Don't believe okay. me. What do I know? Um, you know, of course, now brakes do wear, but, mm -hmm. you know, in an EV, um, they, they wear a lot less. And um, tell us why. You're a car girl. Tell us why. Well, if you're relating to the, um, um, <laughs> sorry. It's all good. Regenerative, <laughs> Regenerative braking. braking. Yes, that's what, that's yes, what I thought you I were going to say. Okay, exactly. so, so yeah, yeah, because of that, of course, the, the brakes yeah. the brakes do last longer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my previous experience, I mean, I haven't had this, this car long enough right. to say that I've spent any money on maintenance. Yeah. Obviously, it's only been a couple months. Yeah. Um, I've had <laughs> other... Um, ice cars i guess i should say yep. and they have been you know german engineered yep. and they are very expensive to maintain yep. Yep. um even just regular maintenances mm -hmm. just nothing nothing going wrong with the vehicle just regular maintenances yep. are expensive yep. um and that's just pretty standard you kind of accept that when you drive an ice car it's just like okay well i, I want to drive this brand so i accept yep. that these parts are going to be expensive yep. um with an, an ev those things are much less for and, sure and one th question i forgot to ask you earlier so in your decision making process to look at an ev w was maintenance something that you had thought about or is that For just sure. an after effect no yeah. it, mm -hmm. it was definitely yeah. i thought okay. about because i was spending a lot on maintenance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um so i and it's time as well whether yeah. sometimes you don't always get a loaner so you have to kind no, of sit right and, shop, and so right? I, I mean i had like brand new cars mm -hmm. from the dealership but you have to schedule your maintenances mm -hmm. and you're yep. taking it to the vehicle to, to the dealership mm -hmm. and they can be expensive, yep. I, you know, and um, I, I didn't like that. Like, I mean, of course, you have to maintain your vehicle, and that's mm -hmm. part of it. That's part yep. of the the, um, the experience of driving a nice car and, you know, all those things. I get that. Um, but if you don't have to, <laughs> great. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, There's nothing. There, there, yeah. I, I don't think I have other than than tires and brakes, really, and tire rotation, mm -hmm. really, because mm -hmm. tires would be on the other vehicle as well. Mm -hmm. 
tire rotation and, and brakes. Like, I don't really have any other nope, maintenance on this not vehicle. Much, yeah. I mean, each manufacturer for electric vehicles has their own schedule. They do sure. put together a maintenance schedule. and It's recommended yeah, to do it once exactly. a year. They just take it in and have a little checkup on the yep. vehicle. But it's not like you yep. have to. Like, this, Yeah. Yeah, right. So it's a much easier experience, folks, if you haven't heard that already. And, yeah. and if you have and you, and people ask you about it, then you can just kind of shout out some of the things that are involved with yeah. an internal combustion car. Uh, from a maintenance perspective, that not only costs you money, but time over the sure. lifespan of the car um, and effort. And, uh, you know, not all cars are machines. They're, they're not fallible. Um, so... Uh, or is it infallible? I'm going to mess that one up. Uh-huh, somebody's going to okay. somebody's going to comment on me, but they're not perfect, something. so they do break, yeah. right? No matter what, and uh, need fixing. But you're right; the maintenance on an EV is much much lower. And and yeah, I've, I'm two and a half months in, and I'm not even thinking about maintenance. I'm just thinking about I'm going to have to get a set of winter tires, probably. In yeah. Oh, I will too. For our our climate, sure, it's definitely recommended. I will too. But, uh, that's the only thing I'm ever thinking about anything long term. So good, good on that. And that was part of your decision and mine too. And the uh, last thing I wanted to talk about briefly uh, for this episode um, is just kind of the rapid gate issue. And, and if, you've, if you've heard of that and you say it's basically involving the Nissan Leaf, and I kind of wanted to just bring it up on this show because I haven't really had an opportunity on our normal video shows to talk about it as much. I've talked about it to people in person, but I wanted to just quickly go through it and get your perception as well because maybe I'm just full of bunk and, and you can straighten me out here <laughs> sure or not. not. But <laughs> Uh, the whole premise is that, you know, the, the new Leaf, uh, a fine car as it is, um, does not have active thermal management like a Tesla or like an i3 or like the, the Chevy Bolt, as an example, the Hyundai Ionic. But similar to the VW e-Golf, uh, they are passively uh, cooled from a uh, thermal perspective, which means the the cooling just dissipates over time. There's no fans. There's no anything like that. It just it heats up. And then over time, uh, based on ambient temperature, they will cool down. And of course, the biggest detriment to batteries is heat, right? Mm-hmm. Cold, but we can circumvent. You can still bring back a battery from the cold, uh, but but heat damage is irreversible once they get damaged mm-hmm. to to uh, to those degrees. So um, so heat is very important for auto manufacturers for electric cars to to take care of and manage. So. You know, Nissan has never had an active thermal management infrastructure or a solution in their cars. They've relied on passive, uh, not active, uh, for the generation leaves. And, you know, for selling way over 300,000 of these globally since 2010, the amount of of serious failures have been zero. The amount of, I'm sure I know of people that have had some battery replacements done on older gen leaves, but um, the numbers have been extremely low when you look Mm. at the, the amount that's out there from a fleet perspective. So the new leaf is very similar in that, in that it uses that technology. Um, and and one of the things that was um, brought up a few months ago by some folks in the UK, and I and I believe Bjorn originally touched talked about this a little bit as well when he did his initial review of the leaf uh, back uh, earlier this year, was that uh, after some some you know one or two rapid charges, especially the second one, it, they they tend to slow down. Mm-hmm. So the car will still charge, but the um, the the, the charging mm-hmm. uh, input will will slow down in some cases drastically. So instead of it being you know starting at forty two or forty four kilowatts, I know the Model Three I think comes out around one hundred and ten, no one hundred and twenty or something when you plug it in. Like supercharging right, is pretty fast, yes, right? Yeah. So so at about you know a third sure. of what you're getting for on the high note, uh, and then you know a second charge or a third charge can can drop down to you know instead of forty. 442 can drop down to 35 to 28, 22 right. to even 19 or 15. It can drop down quite significantly. And what, it, what that means is that it just you have to stay there longer. So instead of a 30, 45 minute or an hour wait, it could be two or three hours to get the same charge over time. So um, people have identified this as an issue with the LEAF and they, they, this nomenclature of rapid gate came out and it's kind of stuck around and people are, are kind of, you know, throwing that around as a negative to the LEAF. And, and uh, I've talked to Nissan, a lot of people have talked to Nissan and the official response is, well, we've, we've designed the car to do that. We want to throttle it down so it doesn't overheat the batteries. So it does provide uh-huh. you for, for protection and that's the way it's been designed. So it's not a defect in the car. That's the way it is. And I get it. Um, I think... The issue with rapid gate, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the first issue is I don't think the dealers are qualifying people well enough. So when somebody's walking in to look at a leaf, as an example, the guy on the floor, a girl on the floor, should be asking some questions about, you know, what you, we talked about at the top of the show, what's your driving habits, right? Right. Um, you know, uh, are you going to, going? do you need a minivan because you've got you know, four kids and a dog, okay. right? Or whatever. 
So, you know, what are your driving habits? And, and you know, if you if the case seems to fall that they do a lot of long distance driving or they're going to need multiple, you know, beyond the 250, 270 kilometer starting range a day, they're going to need that. Then the salespeople should be saying, well, by the way, we've built in this safety feature that will throttle down charging after the first or second fast charge. So if you're going on a longer trip, mm-hmm. be prepared that it's going to take you more time. I think if Nissan had done that or or is doing that, hopefully mm. they're doing it now. But if mm. they have done that in when they first started selling the car, I don't think we'd have this issue. Mm. Uh, because my belief is that, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that an informed buyer can make the their right own decision. decision right? right, so right. Their own you decision. Know, when you looked at the Model 3, yeah. you, you made yourself very informed, right? Yes. So that yes. it could fit into your lifestyle, right? Right. And not... I didn't. I don't think a salesperson gave me that information. Right. It was right. other owners. Exactly. Other. <laughs> yeah. You, you looked around. Other it owners. was the community. It was yeah. the other owners that yeah. kind of gave me that information. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I knew some of those um, rules about you know using a supercharger and how long yeah. it was going to take me mm-hmm. and whether there was other people there, how long it was going to take me and leaving some space yeah. and all those things. Right. Yeah, I get all, that. All the nuances around all, that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Um, I so, hear what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So in Nissan's case, um, I think they're at fault for not informing potential buyers. Mm-hmm. I mean, now this is out there. So hopefully they are now at least, you know, and I've had some conversations with execs at Nissan Europe and Nissan North America about doing that, that they mm-hmm. should make sure they qualify. Uh, but second of all, uh, you know, people th- think the car is a dud. Some people think it, there's a lot of stuff on forums and stuff about it. But you have to remember where Nissan's coming from. So they're coming from a more, a, a truly more of a mass market approach. Right. right? Um, say what you want to say about Nissan or any other vendor, but you know they they came out with a car that was a globally uh, available vehicle from day one, right? And that was at a price point that was you know lower than any Tesla Very out there, accessible. lower than most you know yeah. uh, cars, lower than the i three and all these others, mm-hmm. uh, the Bolt that gave you pretty decent range and that people love. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, most of the Leaf owners I talk to, the high vast majority of them just love their Leafs, whether they're yeah. the twenty four or thirties or whatever. So, so they've had some history there, and um, they saw an opportunity for the new Leaf to capture that what I call the white space market. So you've got you know you've got the people that road warriors that need to drive a lot, like yourself, sure. that part of their job or lifestyle. Uh, that you know, and 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 you've got the higher price. You've got some that don't need a lot, but that don't have you know that really they could get away with a spark EV or something like that. Um, and then you've got kind of this white space which with for 90, 95% of the people, what they wake up with in their daily range is going to be more than fine for them. And I think Nissan recognized that that's a big market Mm -hmm. and that that's an area to get new people into EV adoption. Mm -hmm. So if we price the car appropriately and we give them a load of features, they're not going to care about active thermal management because they're not going to need it because the vast majority Mm -hmm. of them are not going to really need to go beyond one rapid charge a day or right. something like that, right? If they do. So I think mm-hmm. that's, and that's just speculation on my point, but mm-hmm. just the way I, I see Nissan's positioning, that's to me the market that they've gone after with the new Leaf. Um, so for that fact, that's one reason they haven't put in active thermal management because if they have, it would have jacked the price probably right. another 5000 or more. Right. And now all of a sudden that, you know, that 40000 dollar car or thirty five thousand dollar car is now forty or forty five right. and you know and that starts getting out of your average person's uh Price when they range. can get a Honda Civic mm-hmm. for twenty five grand or whatever right right so does that seem does that seem viable it makes sense. I mean, you know you talk yeah. to a lot of dealers you know sure. a lot about the different cars that are out there and how they target to different markets yeah so I hear you like mm-hmm. when you're saying this they're targeting a certain market and and to that market it makes sense it wasn't necessary I mean the Nissan mm-hmm. like the first uh, like generation was around for a long time and had that been an extreme issue in the in the new version they would have I guess addressed those issues so I mm-hmm. guess it hasn't been this huge mm-hmm. thing but do you think that going forward they're going to be addressing this and making some changes well I mean they have announced a 60 kilowatt version of the Leaf that'll be coming out for model year 2019 or 20 20 i speculate more 2020 um in fact we talked about that uh, trevor and i on the show we taped earlier today that'll go out in the next few days about some spy shots for seeing some of the, some potentially that car 
Um, whether it'll have Active Thermal Manager or not, we don't know. The speculation is that it will, and it'll have different batteries. So it seems like they're going to go after that other marketplace. Right. But again, the price is going to climb if they do, obviously, right. right? And also, maybe at the time, you know, there weren't a lot of other EVs right. on, on the market. Right. So maybe, you know, now the it's a bit more advanced, yes. there's more options, technology's mm-hmm. more advanced. So they yeah. are going to have to, you know, address that yes. and, and, and going forward, obviously, you know, put that and in. And I'm sure some, they will. Yeah, they wants will. to remain competitive sure. and, and they've, they've carved out a bit of a niche for themselves in sure. the market and they want to continue there. So I would guess that they're going to go yeah. after that and, and put them and do offer the technologies based on the market that they're going after. Right. right? So I think uh, my point about Rapidgate is, yeah, is, no, I, hear is you. I don't think it's not a, it's not a flaw in the car. And I, and I think it's purposely built for the way it's built on purpose. Yes. Mac, Nissan wants to maximize profits, mm-hmm. right? They're a company, they're in the business to make of money. Course. So whatever they can, they can lower their costs. So they can sell a car and make more profits. You experience this with dealers all the time when mm-hmm. you talk to them. It's all about profits. Um, so obviously they're going to come out with what they think is something that's going to sell mm-hmm. and that's going to meet a certain market and it's going to make them profitable. Why do you think Tesla is only shipping long range Model 3s right now? Yeah. Right? It's all about profit. Sure, sure, they can make a standard range. There's no doubt in my mind they could start cranking out 4,000 of those a month, but they're not because they need a profitable car right now. So Nissan's decided to build and spec a car, obviously to maximize profits and also to go after a market space that they think is viable. Right. And I think I'm correct only because if you look at the sales that are happening right now for the Leaf, they're off the charts in the global markets. A little bit softer in the U.S. and Canada, mainly a supply-demand issue there. But you look everywhere else, they're just going crazy. They're obviously exceeding their expectations. So if it was a terrible car... They'd sure. be falling apart. No, I hear that, you. I right? mean, like Tesla and Nissan yeah. are a little bit different oh, they're, in they're their completely deliveries. Different. They're, okay. they're completely different. <laughs> okay, okay. No, they are. They're really um, different. So. But like, how long have you had the Leaf now? Uh, I've had it two and a half months. So okay. I so I have you had month. any like? Issues I've had zero with this? issues. Yeah. But, you know, to be honest, I I haven't really had to rapid charge it. You know, right. I thought by now I'd so probably again, have to yeah. rapid charge it because I am. I you know I'm I'm going up to Collingwood. I've gone to Grand Bend. I've gone to Brantford. So I have gone out of the area. But the 270 have been enough to get me out somewhere and mm-hmm. get me back home. I did stop once um, and charge it at a public uh, charger at one of the Tim Hortons KSIs just to try, just to see mm-hmm. if it worked at the Chatamo. Uh, and it was, it was uh, I think, at the beginning when we had this heat spell of 35, 40 degree yeah. humidex days. And, you know, I was driving on the highway and I pulled over and I think I was cranking out 22 kilowatts. And... I'm pretty sure that's because of the charger I was at was a KSI and there are, none of them are installed properly from what I hear from people. They're all <laughs> installed wrong. So they're mm-hmm. all coming out low to begin with. But for me, it didn't matter. I went in, I had a coffee. Um, mm-hmm. I checked up on some emails and 20 minutes later, I walked out with more than enough juice to get me home. Nice. So it was more of a trial, but that was kind of like a real life example. It mm-hmm. said, if I needed to do it, how would this work? Mm-hmm. So again, for my lifestyle, I'm not bothered by sure. having to, you know, having a slower charge if I have to wait another half hour or so. Um, If I'm doing long trips where there's two or three or four, and I know some people that do that, then you have to plan mm-hmm. your day differently. Absolutely. You know? And I was just going to say that too. Like when it, when, when that, when that weekend we had that heat wave, mm-hmm. it affected me too. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I had family over and we were driving on the highway and there was traffic and it was very hot. And yeah. so I had the AC cranking yeah. and it was affecting my range, range. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And so I did have to charge a little bit more that weekend that I would have normally. Mm-hmm. So these extreme measures, these extreme weather conditions, which is, you know, climate change is a real thing. This is really what's happening. That's another show right there. <laughs> there folks. you go. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. and it, it's affecting me too. So yeah, yeah whether you're in their leaf or it, it, it's, it's, it is going to be part of the EV kind of getting used to things. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go, folks. I, I don't want to rant all day about rapid gate, but I just thought I'd yeah. try to clear some of the air there and give you my thoughts and mm-hmm. perspectives and things that I've been talking. I think the Nissan's a fine car, but again, you have to put it like any car, you have mm-hmm. to put it into perspective. So not the leaf is not going to work for everybody. Just like, a Model 3 won't work for everybody for whatever reasons Absolutely. or so forth, right? Yep. Uh, the good thing is that there's choice and there's going to be more choice as time moves forward on the electric vehicle marketplace. Incentives or no incentives, damn it, we're still going to talk about electric cars in Ontario, I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, we'll get it out, mm-hmm. we'll get the messaging mm-hmm. out there should, somewhere. Yeah, for so, sure. but, so that's really all I had for today's uh, first episode of the audio uh, version of uh, EV Rep Show. I, I appreciate you coming out. Any closing thoughts that you want to share with some of the folks here? <laughs> To put you on the spot. Um, yeah, you know? thanks. This is, this is <laughs> no, I mean, like, thanks show. for yeah. having me on. Yeah. I do really love talking about this stuff. I, I can know, talk I about can this all that. day long. That's great. 
<laughs> so yeah, yeah, I mean, I've I've totally enjoyed my experience, mm-hmm. and I think I will continue to. I do um, plan to just keep keep my Model Three for a couple of years, and probably yeah. just get into something else in a couple of years, and just You'll, switch it up. I and, tell you, there'll be a great <laughs> use market for these things. Yeah, they will for just sure. Fly and, and then no, see what's going. Really well. I'm yeah. so excited yeah. to see what the market is going to be like yeah. in two years. It's like it's changed amazing. so much already the yes. past couple of years, and mm-hmm. I cannot wait to see what it's going to be like in the next two years, five years even. So that's really exciting, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to be part of that and just you know just see what's going to happen we are in the midst of change as Mm -hmm. we've been saying the the shift from fossil fuels to electric is already happening and you know i tell people whether you like it or not Not, it's it's happening happening. so you know and it's beyond my lifespan certainly and you know oh my god can i can't even begin to talk about this because this gets me going because no this is like another show because it's not just the vehicles that are changing it's the entire industry it is like from the manufacturer point to the to the 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 dealerships like the whole uh process and Mm -hmm. sales and service it's it's all changing and i'm actually like seeing all of it that's right and it's so exciting you're in the trenches oh my god yeah Yeah, totally and i'm like in the middle of it and i love it i love it excellent anyway we we will definitely do another show (laughs) on that we'd love to i'd love to have you back on another show hopefully you will come back (laughs) of course uh viewers out there if you like what you've heard today please Mm -hmm. send us uh send me an email um, how do you reach us? Uh, certainly, you can, it's the same stuff that we talk about on the YouTube show for reaching us. Our email is evrevolutionshow, it's all one word, at gmail.com. Please, I'll love to hear from people. Mm-hmm. Um, you can certainly Twitter me at, uh, and, and of course, Trevor monitors the, tw- the Twitter as well, at evrevshow is our Twitter handle. And um, I've started a new Patreon campaign recently for the EV Rev Show. Um, since we're starting to find our own, you know, get our own feet here and, and get that thing going as we branch out beyond Tesla only and into, into the whole vast world of EVs. And we're going to do a lot more stuff planned. So if anybody's interested in supporting the show uh, through Patreon, uh, you can check out www.patreon.com backslash EV Revolution Show. Um, sign up for whatever you can, and it would be much appreciated. And uh, It'll help help keep us going because it's something I'm passionate about. And Great. now that you know Ontario is taking a step backward, it just fuels our passion to even mm, shout absolutely. a little longer, well, a little harder. Well, good for you, Ken. So, it's great you. that you are out there, obviously doing this and putting out this message and putting yeah. forward on your own time. As you are, so too. that's great. Yeah, that, and <laughs> most people that are involved in this are doing it on their own on time. their own time. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for for joining me. Wonderful uh, personality that you are for our inaugural edition <laughs> of the EV Revolution Audio uh, Podcast show hope you can tune in for the next one we're going to try to do these uh, every couple of weeks or so in between our video shows and if you like what you hear please send me comments if you have suggestions for topics that you want us to talk about in a fun way uh, please send them to us and we'll get that going so on behalf of myself i want to thank you and Issei very much i have no parting gifts for you other than Aww, okay. i can make you Don't another coffee silly. if you like coffee was great i got a pretty Thanks good coffee machine. it's not great. bad right it's not bad coffee here <laughs> Thanks, in the secret location of the <laughs> i do love my coffee I know. so it's Who, all good <laughs> you, we gotta have it so thank you very much for joining uh joining me today i appreciate it and thanks uh, viewers for listening and uh, take care everybody until next time thank you This episode of the EV Revolution Show is sponsored by File Sanctuary. Paying hundreds of dollars a month for the servers running your business? With their high-performance, low-cost cloud servers, you can break out the big guns without breaking the bank. Get started today at filesanctuary.net backslash cloud and save 10% with promo code EVREVSHOW.